guys happy Sunday and welcome to my channel um I'm today's Sunday the 22nd uh, May 22nd and uh, the reason why I'm making a video today is because there's been a lot of people that have been asking me about digital art how to get into it what products are needed um, especially uh, uh, the art studio in my hometown um, have, has asked me to uh, make some or well start a digital art class at their studio um, and asked me what she's gonna need what she has to buy what programs soft uh, hardware you know products and everything so um, and a lot of people have been asking me about uh, how to get into digital art um, and what you know what they're gonna need so basically I'm just gonna give this video just to that um, it's not gonna be short video uh, it's gonna be kind of lengthy because uh, there's a lot of things to cover and I'm gonna try to cover it the best I possibly can now I'm not the best digital artist in the world um, I'm going to admit that uh, but I am pretty good at what I do and I've been doing it for many years and I have been using sketchbook pro uh, exclusively for my um, my digital art since 2010 2011 so um, I am well versed in the program and and digital art. So uh, basically, what you're gonna need uh, to start off with digital art, of course, uh, is a no-brainer. It's a computer. Uh, whether you're gonna get a laptop or a desktop, uh, Mac or PC, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's all gonna work the same. Uh, basically, all the software uh, looks all the same, and they function basically the same. Uh, there are some Windows specific software uh, for digital art and some Mac specific software for digital art. Um, and nowadays with uh, smartphones and the iPad and and uh, other various tablets, you can actually draw on the screen on your tablet, um, you know, with a stylus uh, such as something like this. Uh, but well, you know, iPad has a whatever. So, um, yeah, so basically, and then with today's technology and digital art, uh, you have your tablets and you have your pen displays. Um, I happen to own both. Uh, I came, I started off using uh, a pen tablet about five, five and a half years ago, and, and then I graduated into a pen display, which I have to say it has been the best experience in drawing digitally. It's, it's more natural. And um, I have seen a very huge difference in my digital art uh, since I have gotten my my XP pen. So, uh, so yeah, the first thing you're gonna need is a computer, okay? And make sure it's got enough RAM and make sure it's got enough memory, uh, hard drive memory, um, because you're, you're gonna want to save it unless you want to go and uh, purchase an external hard drive, which I would recommend, um, because you'll never know what's gonna happen to your computer. So after you get your computer and you're ready to get into digital art, um, you're gonna need a drawing instrument. Now there are very, very, various <laughs> different drawing instruments that you can use, uh, pen tablets. We're gonna start off with pen tablets, okay? Now there's many companies that offer uh, pen tablets to draw on the tablet and you can watch it on the screen. Um, it takes a lot of eye-hand coordination. I do have to say that's what takes some time to get used to because for people who are artists and people who are used to looking at their work while they're drawing, um, you're basically kind of drawing kind of blindly at first because you have to focus on the screen and move your hand and you got to uh, uh, coordinate your hand to the screen and, and vice versa. It, it, it gets really difficult at times, um, especially when you're starting off. Um, so what you're gonna need is something like this. This is a uh, Wacom Intuos 4. This is pretty old. It's about five or six years old. I've been using this exclusively for all of my digital art, um, and it's served me quite well. And to this very day, it still works perfectly. Even though it kind of looks worn out, it is very worn out because I do digital art every single day. So um, something like this. 
there are other companies um, like XP Pen, which uh, is currently um, my sponsor, and um, uh, XP Pen, UC Logic, Huion, uh, UG, I believe, UG, yeah, UG, and um, Artisol. There, there are so many different. Um, companies out there that provide a uh, digital pen um, or well, digital tablet uh, for your digital work for your digital art okay now some of them are gonna have more features than others of course um, Wacom is basically the Lamborghini of all uh, <laughs> digital art products um, they are considered the top of the line um, when it comes to this uh, they're basically People who want to get into digital art want a Wacom, but I have to say this, Wacom is only one avenue, Wacom is only one product that, uh, well, one company that provides um, digital art products, and other companies provide just as well, I mean, just as well as a product. Um, so very soon I'm going to be doing some reviews on some uh, digital pen displays from XP Pen to kind of show the comparisons and and to see the different features and to show give you guys a better idea on uh, what's out there in the market uh, I have contacted a few other companies and um, you know see if I can do some reviews on some of their products and I'm um, just you know just waiting right now but um, right now I can't say there are many different companies that provide a pen tablet that's just as good um, and just as good as Wacom or Wacom or whatever you guys want to say. Some people say Wacom, some people say Wacom. Uh, now, mine's kind of dusty. I haven't used it in over a month because I've been stuck on my uh, XP Pen Artist 22 HD, which has been completely amazing to me. Um, so basically, you have uh, the digital pen tablet and you have your drawing uh, area, which they come in different sizes, so this is, I believe, this is the small, I believe, I'm not really sure. I believe this is the small, there's like three different sizes, three, uh, small, medium, large, and they have the uh, Intuos, regular Intuos, which is like a base model, uh, kind of like more of an entry level, and then it goes to the Intuos 4, the Intuos 4 Pro, and then it goes to wireless, and, and this one's not wireless, but um, this one set me back about... $300 back about five or six years ago and um, what does have is express keys so you can assign these keys these buttons for various different functions based on the software that you're going to be using um, for your drawing and then it has this wheel and I just totally touched inappropriately touched my, uh, my tablet later on honey later on so, um, so yeah, so it has a, a wheel, a select a wheel, um, and then you have your button for different various functions. So uh, you hit the button and it's um, zoom in, zoom in, zoom out, uh, then you hit it again, it's rotate, and then you hit it again, it's brush size, and then you kind of turn the wheel, and I'm filling this up again, and I am so sorry if this looks wrong. But um, yeah, basically, this is very basic. Uh, other companies, like I said, other companies do offer a product that's just as good as this one uh, for a lot cheaper price. Um, Wacom tends to be extremely expensive and that's because of the technology that they put behind their product. Um, but other companies, like I said, um, XP Pen, uh, UG, uh, Huion, uh, I'm trying to think about all the other different companies. Um, Artisol that provide um, the digital tablets for you to draw digitally on your um, on your uh, computer. Now the thing is that they come all various different sizes, and some have express keys and some don't have express keys. Um, but don't let that kind of deter you because you can always use your keyboard. Um, it is a little bit harder to kind of draw. On the tablet, and then have your arm out over here, and and kind of use express keys on your keyboard, um, well hotkeys on your keyboard. 
to um, to complete various functions. Some people don't really, you know, remember uh, what all the buttons on the keyboard are. Uh, some people do. Some people prefer to use a keyboard. Me, since I got my XP Pen um, pen display, I have been you defaulted to using my keyboard, and I've learned a lot of other functions on my keyboard, which I feel like make me uh, makes it a little bit faster, a little bit easier for me to create my art rather than, than use you know six express keys. Um, and you're just confined to those six express keys unless you want to use your keyboard at the same time. Um, and then from there you go into your software. Um, again, I'm using right now, which you can see on my screen right now, which you can see on the screen right now because I'm a little tiny box in the corner. Um, I have a uh, Sketchbook Pro. Um, pulled up over here and I have a quick line drawing of um, uh, my actually my next drawing that I'm working on which is kind of like a, uh, a thank you to um, Aaron at XB pen who has been my contact and who has been helping me um, with the sponsorship and, and XB pen and everything and uh, so she sent me a picture of herself and I am basically um, creating a digital portrait of her as, as a thank you you know I just I just like to do nice things for people so um yeah so this is my I'm on my XB pen right now and like I said it's so much easier for me to work on the screen than using a digital tablet but again um, it's all about preference some people prefer to use a digital um, tablet because they can't afford a uh, digital pen display but but you can't you can't afford it I'll get on that a little bit go to that a little bit long a little bit a little bit a little bit later so various different softwares there is Sketchbook Pro there's Metabang there's Paint, uh, Paintstorm Studio Photoshop is a notorious one that a lot of people use Photoshop and you know what I like Photoshop don't get me wrong I do like Photoshop but it's hard for me to kind of transition from Sketchbook Pro, which has a uh, interface such as this one that you're looking at right now, and then you got Photoshop, which I do have Photoshop, which I don't even know where the heck the program went. But oh yeah, I had a trial version, and um, it, the trial version expired, and I don't no longer have it. But um, there's different various programs that you can use for your digital art. Some of them are free and some of them are free to try. Some of them you have a subscription for. Now Sketchbook Pro is um, a free a free software uh, for the most part. And but it gives you its watered down version of the full full program. And so if you look at it, and I'm not gonna switch it over from because I do have the pro membership, um, from the free version which kind of just gives you two layers and you're very limited as far as the brushes you can use. Um, you download, well not download, but you uh, pay five dollars a month for the pro version and you have access to all brushes. You can download um, new brush sets which come out every Monday, um, which I have an idea about that and I will be bringing that over to you guys tomorrow. Um, and then it opens up this tool area right here which I'll move it around so you guys can see it. This right here allows you, uh, has different functions and everything and things that you normally don't have on the free version. So I would recommend paying the $5 a month to get the full pro, uh, pro, 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 <laughs> pro membership. So uh, you can take full advantage of this program which is amazing. I do love Sketchbook Pro. I'm very, very familiar with the program. This is what I use uh, only for all of my digital art. Now, with that said, I found some other programs in the next, uh, well, in the next, in the past couple weeks, um, and I found uh, programs like Paintstorm Studio. Now, I'm just, I'm not gonna go and draw on these programs. I'm just gonna show you what these programs are and how they differ from Sketchbook Pro and Photoshop. Um, this is Paintstorm Studio. It has a very, very, very Photoshop feel to it. Uh, the reason being is because you can go and wow that brush is pretty big you can go ahead and uh, draw on you know on, on the program and everything it does have features 
See, this is what I gotta do all the time, use my keyboard. I should get a small little tiny keyboard, and um, like one of those wireless ones. That'll help me a great deal to get in, uh, I could have the keyboard like right over here on a small little platform rather than using this huge old uh, freaking piece of, anyway. Okay, so this is Paintstorm Studio. You can customize this uh, interface. I believe there's like seven. Oh, there's six. There's six different works workspace presets. There's different keyboard presets for your hotkeys. Um, but every aspect of this is totally customizable. It's not like Sketchbook Pro. Sketchbook Pro, you kind of like what you see is what you get. You can customize and create your own brushes or download brushes. And um, it's a very straightforward program. This one, you can customize everything. And that's what I fell in love about. Uh, what's what I fell in love <laughs> about this program. That's why I love about this program. I can't even talk today. I'm so sorry. But um, Paintstorm Studio is about $20. I do know that it's supposed to, um, the price is supposed to go up, but like for the first, I don't even know how long it's been like this. They said like for the first thousand downloads, people that download it, it's going to be $20. And then after that, they're gonna raise the price. I don't even know how many people have already downloaded this program, but this software is really, really, really cool. And I did a, a quick, really not so really review on it because uh, I I found the program and I completely loved it. Uh, I still have to learn how to use this program. I'm kind of like reluctant to kind of mess up this. But you have your brushes right over here. This is your brush, um, your brush palette or not even your palette. Use your palette right, right over here. Um, this is kind of like your brush box I want to say and you have uh, complete freedom to do whatever you want on these brushes you can customize every aspect of the brush which is something that you could do on sketchbook pro but it it, it doesn't have that many um, customizable aspects to the brush as this program this program you can just do anything and every single um, one of these um, boxes can be uh, customized to shrink uh, when you're not around it and when you get near it, it kind of opens up a little bit. Um, and I'm still learning how to use that. Uh, this will actually have a, a scripting um, software where it records every single one of your brush strokes, which will make it easier for um, speed sketch videos and, and things like that. It records every single one of your brush strokes, uh, which is pretty cool. And um, then you have this graph where you can customize the pressure, uh, the fades, and also the way the brush acts um, by kind of messing with the uh, this uh, this graph. Uh, your whole feel of the brush would feel so much different. Um, but again, I mean, it does. Like I said, the reason why I say it has a very Photoshop feel to it is because of the way that the lines are so crisp right off as soon as you open up the program and um, there is some lag to this program and the reason being is because uh, I have other software that's running right now like my recording software um, which I don't have that issue with Sketchbook Pro but I do have this issue with this program uh, so I do have to kind of upgrade the RAM on my computer um, I'm running like 4 gigs, I should be running like 16 uh, for a lot of things that I'm going to be working on in the future, but all in due time. So so yeah, so this program is is extremely, like every part of this program you can customize and I do like that. Uh, I will put a more in-depth review and create a piece of art using this program. I just want to learn this program really, really, really well. So there you have that, Paintstorm Studio. Um, Another program that you uh, might like. Uh, oh, what am I doing? Cancel. No. Okay. Now, another program you guys might like, which Sketchbook Pro and Point Paintstorm Studio are probably like my favorite programs. Sketchbook Pro, of course, because I'm so well versed in the program. Um, there's MetaBank. MetaBank is a completely free software um, and it has kind of like two modes to it. One mode is illustration and the other mode is uh, manga. 
with this program um, I do find that it supposed to have like over a thousand brushes and I, I don't know I don't even know how I don't know how to find them so we're gonna get into here um, it does have a partnership program kind of like what YouTube has where you make money off of the ads and stuff like that um, that I did sign up for but I haven't created I haven't even created a piece of art for this program yet okay I will in the future but today I am not I just want to show you what's out there give you guys a, a basic overview of um, the uh, art programs that are that are out there right now uh, to kind of get you started um, in uh, digital art okay now on this the canvas starts off transparent uh, as a PNG but when you hit new you can customize your aspects whether you're gonna use standard for illustration or comics for like manga but it also gives you different um, uh, different uh, templates you can use you set your resolution your background color um, which is of course standard is white but when you open this up as standard um, it's transparent which you can change right over here to a color specific color where it's gonna be white black whatever you want your background to be um, I usually use transparent um, only when I'm gonna create like a logo or I'm going to be creating something that I can uh, transfer over to Sketchbook Pro and complete it in Sketchbook Pro with some backgrounds or whatever else. Um, but yeah, so there you have that. But I, oh, oh, okay. I just learned how to edit the brush. This doesn't really have that many. Um, it doesn't have that many customizable options for your brush sets. But it is, it is quite. It is good. It is a good program. And again, this also has a kind of Photoshop feel to it. Let me, you know what? I'm going to open this up. I'm going to put new. I'm going to put a white background on there because uh, I want to actually see the brush strokes. All right. So this is your pencil tool. And of course, using one of these is beautiful. The reason why, and I didn't get into it when I was talking about my, um, my walk up tablet. Um, you have your pen, which has uh, 2,048 2040 levels of pressure sensitivity. You have your buttons over here, for which are cu totally customizable. Um, on Wacom, uh, XP Pen, they are customizable, but you're limited to the uh, amount of customizable options, um, which I would hope that maybe in the future XP Pen can um, upgrade on that. And maybe upgrade the drivers to allow you to maybe set these to different, um, maybe customize a little more, maybe customize a little more. But XP Pen does not have an eraser on it. It actually has a charging port. So you got to charge your pens. That's why XP Pen gives you two pens, one to use while the other one's being charged. And then when this one dies, it'll you can switch it over. You guys can check out my review on the XP Pen. Um, Artist 22 HD if you guys like to get a little more specifics on XP Pen's products. Um, Wacom does have a an eraser uh, on their end so you can go and erase on the screen or on your digital tablet but you know. Well there goes that pen it's all ruined now. Oh well. I'm not gonna pick it. Fine. If this thing's broken, I'm gonna freak out. All right, I apologize. I didn't mean to throw it. I thought it was gonna hit the couch behind me, but it didn't. Um, so yeah, so then you have, like I said, you have um, Metabang, um, and you have quite a few different brushes, and this also does have a very Photoshop feel to it because the um, lines on the pen, especially on the sharp pen, because this actually has line correction. So if you're kind of like wiggly, it'll actually correct the line for you, which well, I think is a pretty really, pretty cool feature because Sketchbook Pro does not have um, does not have that, but it does have a feature where it uh, helps you create um, straighter lines or or uh, kind of smoother lines, so you don't have a lot of jitter. Okay, you have the G Pen, which I don't even know what the G Pen is, um, but you could, like I said, you could customize. Uh, the brushes they are a little bit um, uh, 
limited as far as the customizability of it, but it, it works. It works though. Uh, so I haven't really made a piece of art with Metabang yet. I will. Again, this is another one of my favorites. Um, so I have three favorites already. Three, three favorites already. <laughs> so yeah, so that's Metabang. This is completely free. So those of you who want to get into uh, digital art and you already have your computer and you already have your digital tablet, um, you want to get Metabang, it's free. So you don't have to pay anything and it's the entire, it's the full program. This is the Meta, Metabang Paint Pro. Um, doesn't cost you a dime and it's not a trial version, it's not a watered down version, it's the full, full, full program. Um, so you would want to get this and learn it. Don't go in there and start going crazy trying to create a piece of art. Learn all the various functions and that's what I do. Um, when I find a new program, I go and I do this, what I'm doing right now. I'll go, I'll kind of mess with the brushes, see what they all do. The mapping pen, I don't even know what the mapping pen does. Um, it kind of reminds me of a G pen and I don't even know what the G pen does. The G pen does this and the mapping pen does this. It does the exact same thing. I don't even know. It has some various different uh, functions and learn what ooze means. I don't even know what ooze means. What does ooze mean? I don't know. Do you know? If anybody knows what ooze means on Metabank, um, write it down right here in the comments. I don't even know what it means. But uh, you have the edge pen, which is really cool. Check this out. Okay, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna erase all this because you know what? I wanna show you guys um, this really cool feature that Metabank has, and I think it's because it's specific for manga artists, but you can use it for illustrations, and I'm just taking my time over here, and I shouldn't even be doing this. You know what? Free i I'm gonna make it big. So, okay. So, I'm gonna show you what the edge pen does real quick before I get into the next program. Um, and I don't have a lot of time. I don't want to make this video too long. It's already almost running at a half hour. So, um, you have your edge pen, and I thought this was a real cool feature. Okay, so let's make it bigger. There's your edge, your edge pen. Okay, so basically, it basic it, it makes your pen mark, but leaves a white space in the middle and kind of outlined. Now, this is what you can do. You can go into your paint tool and you want to make it red. Well, you can go ahead and make that line red. And then the outside's kind of, um, the outside's still black. Okay. Wow. I just totally, yep, I screwed that up. How do you zoom? Oh. This has a kind of wonky kind of zoom in function, and I I still have to learn the program, like I said. Um, but yeah, so you just go and you can change that color, that pen line into any color you want. Um, I like it because oh, uh, there I go again. I like it because um, it's a cool feature. It's something that you don't really see in a lot of pro you don't see it in any any other programs. Um, is this uh this edge pen thing which like I said it's really 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 cool and you'll love it um you use it for manga you use it for illustration I I believe it I mean it'll work um then you have your stipple pen which kind of acts stipply not really um if anybody knows what a sumi pen is or how oh you know what this kind of acts like those Japanese pens and I just totally made up my own Japanese symbol uh, I do have a tattoo of like something like something like that on my shoulder. I really don't remember what it looks like because it's been such a long time. Uh, it's supposed to mean like love in Chinese. I don't even know. But yeah, so there's Metabang. And um, so if you guys get your computer and you get your digital tablet, um, get Metabang, learn it. And uh, this will get you right in the door. I mean, it looks very difficult to use, but I don't know. I never used it. I never used it like that before. Uh, Sketchbook Pro is a lot more simpler, but it's watered down. If you want to try it out, go ahead. It's free, and then it's five dollars a month for the um, for the full program. Okay. Um, this Clip Paint Studio. And that's another program that I really haven't really messed with that much. But I'm learning the programs as I go along. 
and then I'm gonna start making reviews. Oh, this one wants me to use a trial version. This one you gotta pay for. I don't know what the price is. I never really looked at the prices. I just looked at the programs, downloaded the trial version or the full program if they have it available. And um, I'm just hoping this one doesn't open up my other screen, which it's been doing lately. Okay, this one also has two different functions. You wanna do it for manga or you wanna use it for uh, illustration. I don't really do manga, so we'll just go with illustration and see what that comes up with. I don't really use this program because um, it doesn't. It is customizable. This one also reminds me a lot like Photoshop because of some of the features that it has. Um, and then you go into new. Oh, the cams. See, this is what I'm talking about. Half the program opens up on my XP Pen, and the other half of the program opens up on my um, on my monitor and this is something a uh, feature that I don't like because there's a section of this program that stays on this screen and I can't move it I can't switch it over to my XP pen and some of these tools I do need and I don't want to keep on going back and forth so I don't even mess with split uh, clip I don't mess with clip play studios clip paint studio I don't really mess with it because it really I don't I don't really like it um you have a time over here for whatever reason maybe for animation I don't know I don't know but yeah I this program I, I really don't really care too much for um I hey I could be wrong maybe somebody has an idea on how this works or whatever yo drop a comment on the bottom over here let me know because I really I honestly do not know how to use this program and how to get this section of the program um, into my XP pen so I'm not really worried you know so I don't really have to go back and forth it's kind of a, a huge inconvenience um, then there's mischief and for those of you who have never heard of mischief um, and I'm thinking I mean, this one the program you do have to pay for as well um, but I do have the uh, free evaluation um, version of it and this is it mischief very 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 simple and but has one cool feature and I'll show you what that is See what I'm doing? It has an infinite canvas. So I can zoom out indefinitely and then zoom back in indefinitely. It's an and this is an endless canvas. So you can just zoom in, zoom out, and draw whatever you want to draw. Um and then zoom in. And the cool thing about it is that the more you zoom in, your lines never get pixelated. This will never get pixelated. Look how close I am to this line. It never, ever, ever gets pixelated. So you have an infinite, and it's a light program, it's small. You have an infinite canvas over here where your lines and your artwork stay as crisp as they possibly can and you don't lose any kind of quality at all it never gets pixelated this is an awesome program uh, I would use it for just you know uh, maybe doing like an animation to where I'm drawing something and I can zoom out and draw zoom out draw zoom out and draw and just create this infinite world um, and and just make it look just awesome and create a, a video of just zooming in into this world and you just continue to keep on seeing these things coming that is an idea and that may be a project that I'm gonna go and take on myself to to kinda see what this program can actually do and create a world where all you do is is uh all you do is just zoom in and zoom in and, and you can just see this world just coming to life 
and and I think that is so cool. It does support layers. You can change you know different aspects of of the um, uh, of the program itself. But I'm not really sure if the brushes themselves are, are customizable. Are custom? I don't know if you can customize the brushes. I never really mess with it that much. Um, it does have a very simple color palette, and it does have a very simple uh, layering system. I don't know what pins mean. Uh, if anybody has ever used Mischief um, and kind of want to just give me some pointers on it, uh, on how to customize some of the aspects of it, please do. Uh, you know, write a comment down, uh, send me a, a, a message on, on, on Google Plus or, or YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. Guys, I really, really, really want to try something like this. And if anybody wants to go and collaborate with me and, and create something really cool using this program, just write a, write a comment on the bottom. Um, this video is good, about to be cut off very, very soon. So let me get into the last program I want to show you guys, which is uh, Rebel or Rebel or however you want to say it. I say Rebel, people say Rebel because it, it does look like it says Rebel. Um, and this is, like I said, just basically getting into um, digital art. This is the programs that you want to look for and um, that'll help you a great deal with getting into digital art, just learn the programs. That I can't stress it enough. Learn these programs, um, whichever one you want to try first. Uh, me, personally, I would say Sketchbook Pro. Uh, pay the five dollars a month. If you can't afford the five dollars a month, get the um, get the uh, free version, um, and just mess with it. You know, kind of see what you, what you could do, and then when you start learning how to use the program a little more. Then go ahead and 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 go for the pro membership. Um, if you don't want to do that, get Medibank. It's free, completely free. It's not a watered down version of anything. It's a completely free pro program. Get Medibank, learn the program, come up with some awesome art. I would love to see what you guys come up with. So we have Rebel, and I'm gonna go quick in this very very quickly. Um, this is a natural paint program. So whatever you use, the paints that you use. Are natural. It looks like it. It feels like it. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show you one example. Then I have to cut this video. Um, you got this. Wait for it. You see what happened there? It acts like water paint, and this is your water paint brush. Okay. Another cool feature about this is when you lay down some paint, there's a blow function and allows you to blow. It allows you to blow on the water paint and allows you to um, basically move the paint and blow on it while it's still wet. Technically still wet. Wet. Okay. It has a drying time. So you let go and after a few seconds, the paint and the water will seep into your canvas or your paper, whatever the heck this is. And it allows you to create, um, oh no, you know what? This one's still, this is still wet. I put a lot of paint down. So the more paint you use, let's say uh, you do this and you just keep on doing this, it'll act like a pool of water or a pool of watery paint. There it goes. And it's animated and it's animated. And it's freaking animated. Now this works with the water paint and it works with your um, ink pen, where you draw or you write, and then it soaks itself into, over time, it'll soak itself into the paper and it'll look real. Um, and then this also has that function where you can go and blow. So right now I'm blowing the ink. And then you let it go, it has a drying time of whatever the drying time is, and then you can't manipulate it after that. Once it dries and once it seeps into the canvas, you cannot cut, you can blow it and move it around and stuff like that. This is a really cool program. And um, I haven't really, I kind of messed with it real quick. It's very limited as far as how many brushes you have. This is only the evaluation version. So I'm not really sure if you get the full version, if you get many other brushes, and if all the brushes are animated. I'm not really sure. But well, if you're gonna use like, this is your acrylic paintbrush, and it really acts like acrylic, and then you it blends colors blend, just like they would it with acrylic 
um, paint. And it is a little bit laggy because I do have another program running right now, but um, it is what it is. But yeah, it acts like what it is. Um, your pencil acts like a pencil, airbrush acts like a, a paintbrush, uh, airbrush acts like a paintbrush. Okay, well basically, these are the programs that you'd want to look for when you're starting off with your digital art. Um, don't go into something too crazy. Learn these programs and it's going to uh, help you in the long run. Um, me, I would recommend using Sketchbook Pro because look at this interface, very simple, straight to the point, and all the features, everything you need is right here to create an awesome digital art piece. Trust me, that's all I do. I create digital art pieces every single day. I'm working on every single day. Um, if you want to see some of my speed sketch videos using Sketchbook Pro, look at my other videos. Um, if you guys like what you see, you guys like my videos, subscribe to my channel, um, smash that like button. Guys, it helps me out, it, it, it helps you out, it helps out my channel. I can bring out some better videos for you. Um, there's a lot of cool things I'm gonna be working on um, in the next couple weeks, which I'm going to incorporate into my channel and make it permanent in my channel. So every day I'm going to have uh, my channel themed a different way. So basically, uh, Mondays I'm gonna work on something and then Tuesdays I'm work on something Wednesdays and I'm trying to I thought about doing a video every Monday Wednesday and Friday but because there are so many things I want to show you guys and so many uh, uh, so many different um, avenues I mean a lot of reviews are gonna be coming guys um, a lot of reviews for software a lot of reviews for um, uh, hardware and digital art products uh, you know what I'm just gonna make a video every single day and then have that video uh, basically um, showing you guys something different and it's gonna be consistent so um, with that said guys look this is what this is what's gonna get you in the door for digital art this is just a basic I'm gonna start working on some digital tutorials so you guys can get a better idea on these programs work but in the meantime guys like I said get a computer get a, a, a digital pen tablet um, if you can afford it get a digital pen display there are very, very, I keep on saying very, various different programs and different uh, companies that offer products that are just as good as Wacom. And uh, XP Pen is one of them. I own an XP Pen and I cannot stress you enough, $609 uh, for an XP Pen as opposed to $1,700 for a Wacom. Very well worth it. Okay, it, la it, you know, it lacks a few features that Wacom does have. But in the long run, it does what it's intended to do, and that's help you create awesome digital art. And I've been using this for a little over a month, and I absolutely love it 100%. Um, and I can't rec recommend it enough to you guys. So if you guys are in the budget, $609 for an XP pen, or if you guys have the money, you guys want to get an, uh, a Wacom and spend $1,700 for the exact same size product with just a few extra features, then go ahead. Um, that's up to you. Um, but if you just want to start off and you want to learn how to use digital art, you don't want to spend too much money, well, if you already have a laptop, you're already halfway there. Um, just go ahead and grab yourself a digital pen this up tablet. Um, they range anywhere from XP pens, uh, range from like 50 to almost $100 for the um, pen tablets. Wacom, they go from like 90 all the way up to three, four, five hundred dollars for your tablets. Um, there are other companies that are a little bit cheaper and some companies are a little more expensive. So it's all about preference, it's all about what your budget is. Um, if you just wanna learn and you wanna get into it and get and kinda get an introduction into it, well then get your laptop, buy yourself a, a you know a cheap digital pen tablet and you'll get your your you'll be able to get it. Um, get yourself a software, like I said MetaBang is free. And, or get the free version of Sketchbook Pro. Start using it, guys. I, I, you guys will love it. I promise you that. So, with that said, this is Apollo signing off. I will see you guys tomorrow uh, with a new video based on Sketchbook Pro, and um, and maybe a speed sketch video. I'll probably work on a speed speed sketch video tonight of Aaron over here that I'm working on right now. Okay. So, see you guys later, and uh, like, subscribe and all that other good junk. Okay, peace.